It's a very well-known fact by now that reality shows are perhaps the trashiest things on the entire planet. And I'm convinced that 50% of the viewer base are people watching them ironically, and the rest I guess are probably people who know how garbage they are but watch them anyway. I've never spoken to anyone over the age of like 40 who actually enjoys this shit, but they're so persistently popular that someone out there has to be watching them. These shows always have the dumbest and most bare-boned concepts, oh just shove a bunch of hot people on an island mate, and are somehow always filled with just the most obnoxious people that are intentionally annoying so you can go on rants about them on social media. Anyway, I really don't like reality shows if that wasn't obvious enough. So today I'm going to be torturing myself as we take a look at seven of the trashiest and weirdest ones I could find, which, believe me, was not very hard. I only watched one episode of each though because I feel like if you've seen one you've kind of seen them all and also because that was about as much as I could take. So without further stalling so I don't actually have to watch them, here we go. Okay, for starters, how's this for a reality show concept? It's pretty much The Bachelor, but the person the contestants are competing for the affections of is Prince Harry of the Windsor Royal Family. You know, the one with the a thousand year old queen. Except that it wasn't Harry, it was just some dude named Matt who happened to kind of look like him a bit. I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't mildly curious as to how the hell they pull this one off, so let's check out the first episode, shall we? That's Prince Harry. No way. It can't be. He's Prince Harry, and I know it. What? How? You see, underneath all the trappings, he's not a prince at all. Oh my god, wait, really? I have to convince them I'm Prince Harry, but the goal is for them to like me for who I am. My goal is to catfish all of these women who are clearly only here for my immense wealth, and then hope they still love me when they learn that I've been deceiving them this entire time for the sake of televised entertainment. You kiss the guy I like. Bitch. You are fake. Are you kidding me? Ah, make it stop. Imagine being so proud of this idea that you want your name plastered right at the beginning of it. He's a phantom. I, th I have a feeling he's British. <laughs> Luckily, they managed to track down 12 of the most intelligent people in America to make this premise work. Is he someone in royalty? Maybe someone famous. A diplomat of some sort. From the sounds of it, it doesn't even seem like they told anyone who the prince was when they signed up to the show, which does explain why no one did any research beforehand. This is Matt Hicks. I'm 23 and I'm looking for love. He's single. Poor. Okay, dude, you don't have to bully the poor guy. He's single, lonely, and overall just a worthless waste of space in comparison to the glamorous and handsome Prince Harry. And he just so happens to look a lot like the world's most eligible prince. Prince Harry of Wales. In 2012, Wales Princess Diana. Diana. Official royal title. That is the face of a man who is immediately regretting signing that contract. Whoa. Yeah. Find the tree, find the tree. My bum hurts. Harry is also given a fake butler named Kingsley, whose sole purpose is to ask questions in place of the audience, and also get ordered around a lot. Poor Kingsley. He then spends a solid, like, 10 minutes of the episode dedicated to training him to impersonate Harry, right down to the last extremely creepy detail in the form of a Rocky montage. After that, we get to meet the contestants, who are just as delightful as these sort of shows have come to make me expect. I don't see the other girls as competition. I'm smart, I'm funny, I'm beautiful. I'm the package deal. And a lot of these girls don't have anything. Wow, he's really got his work cut out for him here. It can be disappointing when girls realize. Guys, guys, in case you didn't know, he's not really Prince Harry. Just just to rub it in there. It's taken like 20 minutes, but they finally get their first glimpse of the dashing prince as he arrives in a suitably over-the-top way via helicopter. Is that who I think it is? That's Prince Harry. How the hell can you tell from so far away? What if you get like fucking eagle vision? I hope I really don't sound ignorant saying this, but I don't know what Prince Harry looks like. Well, that explains a lot. In case you've forgotten, this is meant to be a dating show, so they still do have your usual tropes like recurring elimination. But I must also inform you that tonight, one of you will be leaving us. The first challenge, I guess, involved Harry going around and chatting with all of them and getting to know them in the shortest amount of time possible. And just from that, he's meant to decide which ones to get rid of. I'm going to ask you to leave the estate. Okay. I've only known you for about five minutes, but I've decided that it's just not going to work between us. And on the flip side, he also has to nominate one of them to move into the mansion with him for a night, which once again, I have absolutely no idea how he decided based on the extremely short conversations. I would like you to move into the crown suite. Ugh. Anyway, this trash only lasted like four episodes. Oh man, how did that happen? No way, what a shame. I did some reading on this one to try and work out how real it actually was, because there's no way any of them really thought it was Prince Harry, right? 
Well, it turns out the crew actually put a concerning amount of effort into gaslighting these women, even when the cameras weren't rolling. They even had a therapist come on to talk to anyone who was questioning the validity of Harry's identity to try and convince them otherwise. And when they initially arrived on the show, they isolated them for a week in hotel rooms without any access to the outside world. So it makes it incredibly uncomfortable when the point of the show is meant to be, ha ha, look at how dumb these girls are for being tricked. Laugh, <laughs> laugh at how dumb they are. Like, come on, that's so messed up. Thank God this one was canned. Although I really do have to wonder what Harry himself thought of this whole thing. Next up, we have Beauty and the Geek, which sounds like the title of a freaking Disney movie. This is a show about a bunch of fucking nerds and some big hot women who have to work together and put aside their differences to solve problems. This is the kind of shit a 10 year old would come up with, my god. Hello, ladies. Jesus, fuck! This is not a dating show. This is a social experiment. Ah, yeah, okay, sure. I'm interested in functional neuroimaging, uh, studying the way that the brain does what it does. Yeah, what a fucking nerd! Come over here and laugh at this loser for trying to improve medical science! My IQ is 150. I do believe that I am smarter than 99% of the population. Oh, okay, Brad. Maybe some of you guys do deserve to be made fun of. If there's one thing in the universe that we can be sure of, I will probably never get laid. Oh man, why do they have to do that? Why do they have to make such a big deal out of it though and intentionally use it to embarrass him? They claim the point of the show is a lesson about not judging people about how they look, but then they go and do shit like this. Hi, how are you? Much better now. Okay, no, I take all of that back. I'm here all the way from Philly. I'm a dancer for the 76ers. You guys know the Sixers? Ah, uh, get it? Because they don't know about sports because they're nerds! <laughs> the idea of this one, as far as I could understand, is that they're meant to sort of help each other out using their areas of expertise. The nerds help the girls be smart, and the girls help them to be pretty. Alright, I just skipped ahead to see if it ever actually gets to the point, but now, unsurprisingly, I don't know what the hell is going on. But to be honest, I don't really want to know. I don't really want to keep watching this one, to be honest. I mean, maybe it gets better, but I don't really care. Okay, here's one called Are You Hot? And I am so excited to find out if it lives up to that title. Good evening and welcome. I'm JD Roberto. <laughs> That's not a real name. This is Are You Hot? The search for America's sexiest people. Yeah, that's about what I expected from this one. So it's a show where they judge people based on their physical appearance and nothing except their physical appearance. Can you get any trashier than that? You will not be forced to endure any mediocre stand-up comedy because we don't care if you can dance, sing, or tell jokes. All we want to know is one thing. Are you hot? What a great and empowering message. Every contestant of the show is critiqued by a panel of judges who are there to judge how hot they are. I think. And then they just have people walk on stage and the judges vote based on a five second glance at them. Not. No! It's just so hard to watch. They're so heartless. They come onto stage all excited and within a few seconds they're like... Not. This voting process goes on for what feels like forever and the only thing the show succeeded in doing was making me feel awful for any of the people brave enough to actually put themselves out there. An 18 year old student from Chicago, Illinois, Philip Tyler. What do the judges think? No, you do not do my boy Philip like that. We're gonna put you in front of a crowd of people and humiliate you while shattering your self-confidence in the process. After when they interview the people that got rejected and they're all crying. Oh my god, no! I'm just gonna have to pick my uh my pride off the floor and suck it in a little bit and go home, you know? Oh George, no! <laughs> I wanna give them a hug so bad. You guys are hot, don't worry. Well I'm glad you skipped the Baywatch audition and headed this way. Um, so if that whole thing wasn't bad enough, then they get the people they voted yes on to come back on stage one by one and start rating them out of a number score, and it's even more horrible. Okay. I'm gonna give you a 7.5 on the face, 8.5 on the body, because this chicken legs I had to deduct. Oh my god! Yeah, because the judges themselves are just the peak of human physique. Like, what are even your qualifications here? International heartthrob Lorenzo Lamas. That's not even a- that's not a credible job position! I want everybody at home to see what perfect abs look like right there. 
<laughs> you just got a fucking laser pointer. Ah, yes, these abs here are just not quite toned enough for my liking. Gonna have to give that one a 7 out of 10. Can you imagine watching this as someone who is really insecure about themselves and you see all these people who you would consider to be attractive and then these assholes are like, yeah, but you're still not hot enough. Is I give a 7.5. I think with dark hair, it, it, you need to wear more makeup, unfortunately. This is just the most degrading garbage, which is probably why it only lasted six episodes due to low ratings, because apparently this one was too trashy even for reality show viewers. <laughs> This one is a show called Finding Bigfoot that has somehow gone on for over 12 seasons with over 100 episodes of just some guys walking around in the dark and hearing some loud noises and getting spooked. Did they ever actually find Bigfoot, you ask? No, of course not. But apparently whoever the viewer base for the show is doesn't really seem to care because they get enough enjoyment out of this. Here we got some up on the right. What do you see in that? It's a raccoon. Each episode sees the crew heading to a different location where Bigfoot is rumored to have been seen and features them doing more or less the same thing every time. If there are any squatches here or squatch ghosts. Wait, we're dealing with ghosts now? Okay, look, a giant monkey man I can handle, but that's a bit too much. I'm telling you, every time I look at that house, the hair in the back of my neck stands up. Proof, definitive proof. And they just start freaking screaming as loud as they can to try and get its attention as well as scaring the shit out of every animal at a 10 mile radius. Yo, shut the fuck up! Whoa, 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 did you hear that? I know these guys are getting really excited, but any kind of large animal can be living under there, not just a squatch. Why is the guy with a literal tinfoil hat making the most sense here? Reggie Bird, a friend of mine, gave me a call. He's a member of the Supernatural Bigfoot Crew. The Supernatural Bigfoot Crew. Now, that is something I like to see written on a dating show profile. I have difficulty with a lot of this paranormal stuff. Not that I believe or disbelieve in it, but just that you cannot measure it. So to try to be objective and, 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 and put a scientific slant on it, is near impossible. Hmm, wonder why that might be. And this is my team, Greg, Dana, and RPG. Hey. Hey man, this is my team, Tom, Chad, and my boy, 3D Platformer. The Supernatural Bigfoot crew is a group of Bigfooters that are willing to dive into the evidence that no one else will. What evidence? Yeah, so it's literally just this for 100 episodes. Truly riveting television. <laughs> Will you stop doing that? I'm convinced half of these people don't even give a shit about Bigfoot. They just want an excuse to scream their lungs out on commercial television. Uh... Which, yeah, I do the exact same. Hey man, let's do some more howls. Yeah, I'm down. Oh, come on. Uh... Imagine going out camping with your family and you just see these random guys in the distance. You keep going, oh, woo! <laughs> in all honesty, it's a genius concept for a show in terms of budget. All you need is a camera that works in the dark and some guys howling into the distance for 40 minutes. And just like that, you have a hit show on your hands. While looking for shows for this video, I discovered that for some reason there is a really weird subgenre of reality shows focused on pregnancy. As if giving birth wasn't gross enough. Like here's one titled Born in the Wild, which focuses entirely on women giving birth in the middle of the fucking jungle. Yeah! But perhaps the weirdest one I found was one called Labor Games, which is a game show held while contestants are in labor. <laughs> I couldn't make this shit up if I tried. And they're expecting their second baby, but I'm pretty sure they're not expecting me. If they decide to play labor games, they can win incredible prizes for their family. So they don't even tell them beforehand. They just freaking pop into a room and be like, hey, I know you're shoving a baby out of your vagina right now, but do you want to win some money? Also, in case you're wondering, the prize on offer here is a $10,000 college sponsorship for the child once they're old enough. All you have to sacrifice is your dignity and a staggering amount of anguish. Look how uncomfortable they are as some random dude with a big ass camera stalls in their room and he's so enthusiastic about it too oh my god you'd want to be on a game show tonight i'll ask you some questions you can win some fantastic prizes right now right now right now, <laughs> right now. i know you're going to be in immense pain trying to experience the birth of something you've carried inside you for nine agonizing months but you get to be on tv oh yeah oh wow is this crazy is this legal probably you not in all honesty though it'd probably make for a really great story once the baby's born so how far dilated are you three three centimeters okay and how are you feeling so far okay do you mean that you don't like it when we bombard you with extremely bright lights they just start like shoving the camera even further in her face <laughs> oh man this looks like a friggin parody sketch anyway moving on <laughs> Now this is one you've probably heard of, but I wanted to talk about it because I find the premise so incredibly morbid. In this show, they shove a bunch of juvenile offenders in prison to try and scare the absolute shit out of them. Whether or not this is effective, I have no idea, but man is it just 
fascinating to watch. This show is not as popular down here in Kangaroo Land, so I do sincerely apologize to all the Americans who are probably very sick of hearing about it, but this is news to me. To make matters worse, they even give each kid a little introduction as if this was a talent show. My IQ is 120. Oh shit, Brad! Watch out, you got some competition! I like to do parkour. I don't know why they're even bothering. This kid's gonna kick ass in prison. He can do parkour. Yeah, that man hurt you. Oh. Putting that 120 IQ to good use, I see. It's just a bunch of adults, mostly police officers, yelling at kids, and that's the entire show. Well, why is your heart pounding like a little girl? You can't kill me. Anybody can kill you. You can slip and fall on the banana peel. You can get in a car wreck. You can fall off a bridge. You can have an aneurysm on a toilet. You never know. There is a very tragic story behind that. So why you got your hair cut like that? You know what? Instead of 50 cent, I think he's about a nickel. What do you think? <laughs> Jail is a bad place to be in because it kind of smells funny. Good to see they're really taking on board the important life lessons here. Why are you smirking? Don't make me come across this county. I don't know. Why did you smirk at me? Oh, God, really get away from me. You are officially a dead man walking. <laughs> Why? I know this is meant to be intimidating or something, but it's just so silly I'm finding it hard to take seriously. Seems to be working on the kids, though. How many seasons of this did they make? Nine? Yeah, I'm not even surprised. They just stand there while they get yelled at by like 10 guys at once and have a Vietnam flashback or something. What, what you gonna, gonna do? do? Get ready, cry, look at What you gonna do? What I tell you? I'm gonna laugh at you now. Hey, you got some real minty fresh breath there, bro. How do you get it so nice smelling? Give me a kiss. Bring it back in here! Put him in here! Oh shit, they have to wear Crocs in here? Kids, get the fuck out of it! I don't know what enjoyment you could possibly derive from this show unless you find it entertaining to watch children cry and just generally be abused by people way older than them. You don't want to do your room, you don't want to do housework, you don't want to do yard work. It's probably just a bunch of boomers being like, Oh yes, back in my day, this is how we used to discipline kids. If you ask me, we should treat all the little shits like this. Maybe then they'd learn a bit of respect. <laughs> And last but not least, perhaps the strangest one of them all. So strange, in fact, that I had to reach out to my good friend Paper Plane for some help with this one. South Beach Toe is a reality show. I think it's my favorite show of all time. And not because it's good, it's just one of the worst shows I've ever seen in my life, and I love it so much. <laughs> so South Beach Toe is um, about a bunch of people who live on the South Beach. They run a tow company, and so much shit happens <laughs> to them. This is a clip called Bernice Defies Death and Seeks Revenge. And so this is Bernice, <laughs> and she's like the main character of the show. And she's like the goddamn Terminator. She is not human. She isn't. Look, she, look how much taller she is compared to everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> she refers to herself in the third person. Yeah, she refers to herself in the third person all the time. <laughs> oh, <f> <laughs> 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 no! <laughs> fucking died. She's alive. <laughs> She's alive! Every episode is like that. Something really fucking just outlandish and impossible happens. I think my favorite thing that I learned about South Beach Toe was that it has plot that continued over multiple episodes. Yeah, I think some of the seasons have like arcs. And the arc of this season, I think this is the season where the, the last clip we watched happens and she's got like a broken leg for most of the season. Something always happens whenever they go and tow something, by the way. Holy <laughs> shit, what the fuck? She's <laughs> getting in with him. I've been trying to help Christy out by doing inventory. But something ain't right. Why <laughs> does she show everything? Extinguish the cigarette or I'm extinguishing fire. <laughs> oh. oh, 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 holy shit. Oh my God. <laughs> When they're not showing Benice defying the bounds of human limitation, they also give time to the other cast members just going about their lives. He's got a date. Why are they filming the date? Anyway, back to Bernice. <laughs> She forgets he's in there for several hours, by the way. And I forgot about his little angry ass. It got so busy. Bro. What kind of business you guys run in here? I've been stuck in this trunk for five hours. Man, stop exaggerating. It was more like <laughs> yeah, three I'm hours. I'm sue your ass. I love that she's trying to make an excuse. It was more like three hours. Then we found a Christmas special because of course there is. Yeah, is the whole sure. Christmas special just her wearing a Christmas hat? <laughs> this is the Christmas special. <laughs> The true spirit of Christmas. And then this one where Bernice uses a jetpack. this one. Wait, what? What is this title? Excuse me. This show has, has better chase scenes than most of the movies I've seen. She's spinning out of control. 
imagine being like a, being that man and you're escaping on a boat and then this fucking woman comes up on a fucking jet. <laughs> I think you get the gist of it by now. This episode has two story arcs going on and the main the main arc is that beat Benice is out for the day. Every time What's they turn ever the, the person runs over. And they're always some kind of wacky character. Like a fucking GTA NPC. Look, you tow my car, I'm feeling to cut you. You gonna cut me? I mean, I'll cut you with my words. <laughs> <laughs> and then literally five seconds after that, Bernice is informed that her tow company is on fire. The office exploded. Say what? <laughs> she leaves for one day. The office fucking explodes. Then some guy falls down the stairs. Lord. All my haters, they tried to hold me down. <laughs> 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 I just, I, she, he was screaming the whole way down until he hit the very bottom. You can, there's like a, they have a little sound effect as well. <laughs> like a little <laughs> Then there's an episode where they hire a literal ninja to be on the towing team. Okay, so the plot of this episode is they have a rookie and she's just so incompetent. Like she doesn't know anything. Is, uh, well, you'll see the twist. What is she doing? Whoa! <laughs> oh my oh! God. She's just a parkour master. And then there was, I, I don't know what they were even doing this time, actually. Can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, there's the time Bernice tried to tow a boat with her bare hands. This won't come in with me, dog. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> oh, she's so yeah. strong. More or less, what I got from all of that is that Bernice would absolutely destroy Goku in a fight, and none of us mortals stand a chance. This one doesn't belong in this video, though. It's absolutely amazing. And I think that's about all I can handle this time round, but that's only scratching the surface of all the crappy reality shows we could look at. I mean, I had to leave out such gems as Sex Box, a show where a couple goes inside a box and, you know, and then they come out and talk about it. Anal sex, oral sex, throwing the lesbians, vaginal. As well as Who's Your Daddy, which has a contestant who was put up for adoption as a child trying to work out which of 25 men is her bio logical father while the rest are just acting. What, what is this shit? If you're wanting to torture me more with some of the worst entertainment that humanity has to offer, then by all means, feel free to let me know down in the comments. And if you guys like it enough, I might do another one of these. But I very much do not want to watch any more of this ever again. Special thanks to this month's top Diamond Vault supporters on Patreon. Enderpigman9, Gulag, Pineapple Monster, Primal, Sergio Arturo 1117 and Zion Trail. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.